August 15th, 2019. From El Cajon, California, this is episode 188 of You Can Bet On That. Hi everybody, welcome to You Can Bet On That, a podcast for the recreational gambler. My name is Mark Duvall, and sitting across from me is Dr. Mike. Hello. Mike, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's been a little rough for us, I think, uh, last few weeks, right? Yeah. The casino hasn't been that good to us. The sports betting, and I'll take the blame for that, has been terrible. Yeah. There was one night where I did pretty good on the picks, and we were at the craps table, and you said, okay, if we win this game, I want to say something to you, Mark. And we won the game, and you turned to me just kind of very quietly. See if you can get two winning days in a row. And uh, I did. And then since then, it's been terrible. Yeah. (laughs) So. Well, this is how bad it's been. All right. We were losing pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then you got the dice. (laughs) And we're in the middle of this hot, hot roll. I had a good roll going, yeah. I started with $60 on the six and eight each, and they were up to 900 a piece. Mm-hmm. The four and 10 were at 500 mm-hmm. a piece. The five was the point, and I think the nine had 500 on it. And all the hard ways were parlayed to the house max. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then this guy walks up to the table. Yeah. And he handed his card, and the name on the card said Lee Harvey uh-huh. was his first name. Oh, well, so that's a good sign but, initially. But, yeah, <laughs> but then the dealer said, oh, no, I think his name was John Wilkes. Okay. Oh, okay, I got you. But we all agreed just to call him Adolf. Okay. <laughs> and so Adolf walks up to the table and throws down five $100 bills as you're starting to pick up the dice. Right. And we're at a $25 table that wasn't very crowded. So no, I was not rolling very relatively You were quickly. rolling fast. Mm-hmm. And your style is when the dice go to you, pick them up and slam them yeah, down the yeah, table. Yeah. I mean, you're, you were in a rhythm. I mean, it was so <laughs> perfect. Yeah. And I think you had made at least three points at that point. It was good. Yeah, yeah, we were making money. And I thought, okay, here we go. This is where I get all my money back and go home. A huge winner for the night. And then Adolf walked uh-huh. up. <laughs> Adolf throws down his $500. And so the dice get pulled from you. And we have to wait while they count out 500 And they announce to the pit that somebody's buying in for 500 And they count it all out. You know, four stacks of... $100 in greens, and then a stack of red, and then they take one of the reds off the top and put five ones there, mm. just to make it a little slower, uh-huh. and they pass the money to the guy, mm-hmm. and he picks it up and puts it in the rail, and I'm thinking, come on, make a bet, because if there's something I just absolutely cannot stand is the guy that walks up, cashes in, and then doesn't make any yeah, It's bets. bad enough when they cash in in the middle of a roll, but then they but don't make it, a bet. It's like, why did wait, you do why it? Why did but, you yeah, do it? Right. What was the purpose? Yeah. Why couldn't you have just waited? Well, no. Adolf looks at the table, and then occurs to him that it's a $25 table. Mm-hmm. Now, he doesn't want to play a $25 table. He's there just to screw everybody. <laughs> and so he picks his money up, turns around, walks away. <laughs> you pick the dice up. Roll them down, seven out. And you know, I'm thinking about this afterwards. You always turn your bets off, but you didn't because you were the shooter. That's right. I, so I, it I, even yeah. screwed you. I, I don't turn my bets off when I'm rolling. Right. I think I will from now on. Yes, I but think that, so. <laughs> that is the time I don't turn them off. I was so infuriated. And I at that point, I, I gave up. A life. I gave up. I mean, the only thing that was going through my head at that particular moment was... What is the lethal dose of Jack in the Box tacos that I need to eat tonight mm-hmm. so that I will not wake up in the morning? <laughs> it's it's probably eight. I think that's. I, I, I came don't think up I've with ever, six. Okay, <laughs> but, but folks, he's not. He did not stop talking about this. And Mike, I know that you know that I could have very well rolled any number in course, that situation. Of course, of course, of right? course, you could have easily have made another six, and mm-hmm. I would have you know went to twelve hundred dollars mm-hmm. on the six. Mm-hmm. But no, that doesn't happen. See, that's what happens in my dreams. Mm -hmm. In reality, it's always a seven out. (laughs) And Adolf walked away. And then I don't even know. You know, I was so fuming. I didn't even look to see if he went to another table. I assume he He, did, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah, he left. I I assume he did. But he just, oh, it's 25. Now, let me ask you this. All right, sir. When you were just learning craps or to gamble, period, a blackjack, whatever, Mm -hmm. 
Did you buy in for $500 anywhere? <laughs> oh, at the beginning of my uh, gambling career? Yes. No, no. No. 200 might have been the max, yeah. and more likely more 50 like, or 100. Uh, yeah. yeah, $100 maybe you'd yeah. put down. Yeah. And then I could almost say, okay, well, he was confused. He didn't know. And, but you buy in for $500 at a craps table. You probably have played craps before, and you probably know that the minimums are stated right there on the table, (laughs) and you probably know you should look at that first and determine, and you might even know that it's, you know, not the best etiquette to buy in in the middle of a roll, especially, you know, if you looked and saw that everybody on the table had all their bets up there, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Oh, my God, Mark. Okay. I agree. If you were, say, some inexperienced gambler, people do it all the time where they don't look at the limits on the table. It happens a lot. Usually it's somebody who's not familiar with the casino or certain games. It's like, oh, oh. But you're right. When you're buying in for that much money, I mean, he you threw think, 500 down like you no didn't big even deal. think about it, right? right. He's like, walked oh, I know, up and I know threw this it game. down. Yeah, right. <laughs> didn't look to see, you know, what the point was in the middle. Of just boom, I'm I'm buying in for 500, and then picked up his chips and walked away. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> All right. Well, if I ever see Adolf there again, yeah. I mean, I was biting my tongue not to, to, to chase I, after him. And say I know something. you, I mean, you were talking about it the whole night. <laughs> I mean, it was, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And it's not that everything was pressed up. It's just that you're in this great role and I'm thinking, okay, this is it. This is the role every week we wait for, right? Yeah, right. And then the guy has to come in. Now, <laughs> Part of me wants to believe he's he works for the casino. And then I'd feel better about it. Like, yeah, he's oh, a cooler. Okay, that they was sent on, the cooler to yeah, the table. Yeah, that was on purpose. But I know that's not true. <laughs> I know that's not true. I know he just came up to screw us. All right. Uh, All right, Mike, let's move along. <laughs> Maybe I can change your mood a little bit here. I don't but know. Let's, uh, this, this is going to uh, this is going to keep me down for a long, long time. All right. Well, let's see if we can drop the subject for the rest of the episode. No guarantees, <laughs> right. folks. I, I have a feeling it's going to crop back up. But uh, let's talk about a, a new game or at least a, a new game to us. So a couple months ago, a dealer at the Isle Casino in Waterloo, Iowa, was accused of cheating for players at a game called Matchem High Low. He was arranging cards in certain orders, and he was doing false shuffles, uh, so the players had a better chance of winning. Right? Okay. There aren't a lot of details about the case against him, but the story caught my eye because of this game, Matchem High Low. So I thought we'd talk about it. Are you ready to learn a new game? All right. Give it to me. All right. Here it goes. It might be my new game. <laughs> okay. I think I'm giving up craps. <laughs> All right. So it's played with a typical 52-card deck or multiple decks. It's a table game, right? The idea is that as a player, you want to have a lower hand than the dealer's low hand or a higher hand than the dealer's high hand. And now let's just talk about some specifics. Okay, you are dealt three cards. This is not a poker game. Instead, all the cards are assigned a value. Aces can be 1 or 11. So for the low hands, aces are 1. For the high hands, aces are 11. 11. 2 through 10 are their face values, right? And the face cards, jack, queen, and king, are 0, Okay. okay. So the value of your hand is you just add up all three cards and you come up with a certain number of points, right? All right. Okay. So here's how the game works. So you make your bet and then each player is dealt three cards face down and the dealer is dealt five cards face down. Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, so it's, <laughs> oh, I like this all so right, far. It's a little different. All right. <laughs> the players look at their cards and add up their individual hand totals. And depending on what the value of their hand is, the player decides whether to go high or low. Can't go both? No. You have to pick one, okay. high or low. So if you have three aces... Well, I mean, you could go either. Well, you'd go high because you can't be beaten high. Obviously, you're going to go high. It's not a bad low hand, but you can't lose going high. Okay. Right? You've got three You've got three for low. (laughs) Right. You've got three for low, but keep in mind. Oh, yeah. You could have three queens and have zero. You could have zero, right? Right. So, yeah, three is not the lowest. So, you definitely go go high in that case. All right. So, anyway, you decide, am I going to go high or low? And there are separate boxes on the table where you put your cards once you've decided. One says high and one says low. If you've got a particularly good hand, you can double your bet. So if you have a $10 bet, you can add another $10 to it once you've decided whether you're going high or low. And, okay. you know, right? and obviously, in your example, obviously you do it. If you had 33, so you know, you double your hand. Okay. So once all the players have set their hands, 
The dealer turns over their five cards. They find their three lowest cards, and that becomes their low hand, right? Then to make their high hand, they use their remaining two cards and the highest card from their low hand. So now they have a low and a high hand, both of which share a common card. Okay. So as a real easy example, let's say the dealer had two, three, four, five, six. Well, then two, three, four would be their low hand, and four, five, six would be their high hand. Correct. Right. right? Okay. So, I mean, that's that's how they set their hand. Yep. So far, I'm following this. Okay, good. Which is unusual for new <laughs> games, but proceed. Okay, and then after that, you compare hands. So if you went low as a player, you compare your low hand to the dealer's low oh, hand. I gotcha, okay. And if you beat the dealer's low hand, in other words, it's lower, or you tie, you win. Oh, you win so with a tie. A, right, a tie is a win. All right. So, and same for the high hand. If you went high and your high hand totals higher than their high hand or equals their high hand, you win. It's just even money. All right. And it's as simple as that. Now drop the shoe on me. What's the catch? There's no catch. That's it. Now There's the house no, no, the house edge is about 2.6%, which, you know, I don't know, for a carnival game because is not too bad. Because they get five cards. Right. They have five cards, you know, to, right. to work with. And right. especially if, like, they You're have You're stuck an, with your three. If they have an ace, well, that actually is one that they'll use as their common card. That's right, you know, right. It could be an 11, 11 or a one, one right? So right. that's very powerful for them, right? Because right. then they'd have a good high right. and a good low, right? Right. But I mean, that's essentially the game. Now, as far as basic strategy goes, the company that actually came up with the game says that if you've got 12 or lower, you should go low. And if you have 13 or higher, you should go high. That's what the company says. So that might not be the true basic strategy, but that's what they say. And as far as doubling, they say double if you've got. 25 or more, or if you've got three or less. Oh, okay. Okay, right. So now tell me about the side bets, because I know there's got to be side bets. Definitely side bets. This guy. Okay, so yeah. there, there are two different side bets. One is called the Matchem bonus, and the other is called the Poker bonus. So the, you, again, you make these bets before you're dealt any cards. The Matchem bonus will pay if your cards match two or more of the dealer's cards. In other words, they're the same rank. So if you've got like a, a 10 in your hand and the dealer has two 10s in their hand anywhere in any of their five cards, then you would win at least something in this You have step. to match two of their cards. Two though. or more. Two right. Or more. So if you match two, it's even money. If you match three, it's four to one. If you match four, it's 25 to one. And if you match all five, it's 100 to one. And of course, if you match all five, you'd have to have multiple pairs. Like Right. If you had a two and a three and a four and the dealer had the other three twos... And two four something, or something like, like that. that. I mean, that would be an example. Yeah, that's okay. exactly right. Yeah, and the other side bet's very simple. It's the poker bonus bet, and it just pays according to what your hand would be if you were playing three card poker. Oh, so you okay. just look at your three hands, right? So and yeah, if it's a pair or higher, very similar, similar to the payout on a, a three card poker oh, table. So it's a kind of a combo three card poker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that'd be worth playing because it'd be like you're playing three card poker and this game. Right. Exactly. And apparently, this game is very popular. At Isle Casino. I, it's not offered in many places, but from what I've heard, people really love playing it. And I can understand why, because it's a perfect game for the casino and the player, because it's simple, but there's some thought to it. Right. Yeah, you it right. really here, I was explaining it to you. I don't even have cards on the table. And you know, it's it's right. actually pretty straightforward. Right, right. But there is a little thought, oh, you know, am I gonna go high or low? And you know, when do I double? And yeah. you know, there's some suspense when the dealer turns over their hand. Well, so. if you get three face cards. Well, you're yeah, just, you're you, going low. You're right? going low, and you're best doubling your bet. Be, best thing to get would be like King Queen Jack of Spades, right? <laughs> right. You, yeah. You win exactly. the side bet with a <laughs> and straight, you get the straight flush. flush. Yeah. And but I'll tell you, I'm glad you brought that up because people who play the game for the first time or when they're first starting out can forget that face cards are zeros because we're so right. used to them being tens in blackjack. R right. And you might have, you know, Queen Queen ten. Right? right, and you're thinking, oh, I've got 30. No, you've got, got 10. 10. <laughs> right. right, so you kind of got to be careful there that you make sure you go yeah. the right well, way. Well, especially with the 10, because mm -hmm. yeah. you might sometimes think, oh, anything that's a 10 is zero. Yeah. Like you're adding just the zero, like you're playing Bakra. Uh, right, right. It's yeah. Zero, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But it's way different. A 10 yeah. really, really is, is worth 10. 10. Yeah. But Jack, Queen, King are all worth zero. Right. So now we got to find a way to combine this with Spanish 21. All right. Well, and, we take all the 10s out of the deck. That's the first <laughs> thing you always do yeah. when you're going <laughs> to. 
Spanish buy something 21. with Spanish 21. I don't know <laughs> how the just, house edge changes. But. Yeah, and then you just, you know, you're just you going to have three card poker, Spanish 21, and <laughs> and uh, match them high low. <laughs> yep. All going on. All in one. It'll be <laughs> stadium. One. Yeah. Right? It'll be a stadium it, right, game, right? right. Where, oh, what are you playing? <laughs> well, I'm not exactly sure, but the first three cards were all jack, so I think I'm okay. Well, I can see how that game would catch on. I'm surprised it's not played. Yeah, I'll have places. to. I'll have to look and see if it. But yeah, it's not in many places. But uh, right. if you're in Waterloo, Iowa, I wonder why the guy decided the dealer who was cheating decided to cheat on that game. Again, I don't know a lot was of it, details about the case. Was maybe it it's maybe easy, easier to cheat. I don't know. You know, he was he was organizing cards so they were together, so there were runs, right. and you know, right. so somebody, not shuffling really. Right. False so somebody shuffling. Somebody might get three face cards or three aces. Maybe something or, like that. Yeah, you know, to the dealer or right. or uh, sorry to the player. Or, uh, right. I don't know exactly what he was doing and and why and if anybody was goats or if he just wanted tips or anyway there wasn't a lot right. of information on the yeah. story. But. So what would be a mediocre hand for the dealer to get that everyone would kind of be happy about? I don't know something kind of in the middle maybe. Right. Yeah. Well, something right in the middle would be good, but you know what would that be? Like maybe five, six, seven, eight, nine. I guess right something like that because five, six, seven, five, six, yeah. seven is would be the a pretty crappy low. Low. And then seven, eight, nine, uh, that's yeah, kind that's, of an okay that's, high. That's an okay yeah. high. Here I was just thinking that pairs were bad for the player, but Maybe no, they're not. Three, so, four, five, six, seven. Or what about five, 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 six, seven? So the low hand oh, is 15, right. which isn't very low. And then five, six, seven, that's 18. Right. Well, which is, I don't know. Yeah. You, caught, you caught me well, without we'd thinking have to about play it, but something it. like that. We'd have yeah. to play it and see, yeah. see yeah. what, you know, I'm just thinking about what would I be hoping the dealer gets. R- right. right? No, yeah. Like in Pi Gal, you're hoping, oh, come on, Pi Gal, come on. But see, high. I mean, as a player, right. you don't care what all five cards are. You're just looking at the low, low or the or high. high. Right. 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 So you're just, that's all you're But you want, on. you know, as the table... You want everyone to win. You'd sure. be thinking, okay, I'm going low, but that guy's going high. Let's yeah. see yeah. see what we can work out here. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, keep your eye out for that. Maybe we can petition to get that out here on the West Coast somehow. Hey, thanks to everyone who's been clicking through our Amazon link. Remember, whenever you're going to buy something through Amazon, please go to our page first. You can bet on that.com and click through our Amazon link towards the top of the page. All right, let's take some phone calls. First up is Tristan. Hello, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is Tristan from Orange County. I am just watching a vlog on YouTube of some people traveling around New Mexico, and I know how Dr. Mike loves awesome casino names, and they're at a casino called Inn of the Mountain Gods Resort and Casino. I've never been there, but that's pretty damn awesome if you ask me. All right, that is all. Goodbye. Inn of the Mountain Mountain Gods. Gods. You like that? that? I also, I got to say this, too. I like the name Tristan. Oh, all, okay, I don't know a, why. I've just always thought that's a cool name. Not too common name, at least no, in America. No, not common. Yeah, but kind of cool sounding. Yeah, I right? agree. Yeah. You know, I I like that. But Inn of the Mountain Gods is a great name for yep. a casino. Yeah. So yeah, that might be high on my list. Okay. Of names I like. I, they should have something like. Zeus's Lounge or something. Well, maybe they do. <laughs> See, and, and maybe that's what the, one of the bars, <laughs> yeah, right? right? At right. Inn of the Mountain, the Mountain Gods. Gods. <laughs> yeah, right. They'd have Zeus's Lounge, Apollo's Hideaway. That's right, I yeah. Mean, <laughs> Poseidon's Pool. Poseidon's Pool, right. right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up is Brent. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. My name is Brent. I'm a first-time caller. I live in Southern California in the high desert, um, you guys probably pass my hometown all the time, heading up I-15 to Vegas whenever you guys go. I'm a student at Sac State, the Sacramento State University. And um, whenever I can, sometimes when I have some extra money, I play at Thunder Valley Casino and Resort in Lincoln, California. And you know how the way craps work in California. The die can't determine the outcome of the roll by themselves. So what happens here is you have a red die and a blue die, and then you have a red square and a blue square with cards that the stick man places on those when the roll happens. Whichever die, blue or red, is higher, the stick man flips over that card, and it determines the outcome of the roll. And I was just wondering, if the cards are shuffled at random, would it be possible that both cards are seven? So no matter you know what outcome the roll might be, Whatever die is higher, you know, you could seven out either way. So if you could maybe explain to me how that might work and how the odds on that kind of work. They say it's supposed to be similar to rolling regular die because it just seems that rolls seem shorter when I'm up there. I've played it a couple times at Vegas and in Laughlin, 
and it just seems like rolls typically are a little bit longer than when I play up at Thunder Valley. So if you can maybe clarify that for me, I am a pretty new crafts player. I've only started playing within the last year. Thank you very much. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye. So yes, we have played this version of craps they used they to have it at separate... Paula, and it's probably the the scheme that you hate the most yes, <laughs> as I, far as California craps. I do craps not like there. that at all. Let's explain it just uh, in more detail. So there is a deck of cards, thirty six cards, that each card represents one of the combinations of two dice being rolled, and there are actually pictures, typically pictures of dice right. like on the two cards. Two fours, a three and a four. Yeah, one six one, one two, two, one three. All the combinations, Combin- all thirty six right? combos, and they go into this automatic shuffle machine. And when it's time for the roll, the stick man or whoever it is takes the first two cards out of the shuffle machine and puts one of them in a red square and one of them in a blue square on the table. And then the shooter is given two dice. Now, these are not traditional dice. If I recall, I'm tra- it, it might be different at this casino, but uh, like on the blue die is like a five and a four, oh, right? And then on the red is like a three and a six, or is, I can't it's remember exactly like what that. it was, but so, it's, yeah. it's so it's so, so stupid. So anyway, whichever die has the higher number on it, that's the color of the card that they'll turn over the the square that the card is in. Okay, right. so if this automatic shuffle machine is really random. That is, on any given roll, any one of the 36 cards or any two of the 36 cards could be on top. And again, even that can come into question because how soon after, you know, once right. the, the roll is over, the stick man puts the cards back in this automatic shuffle machine. Well, how long does it take for the machine to then completely randomize them again? So, right. Otherwise, but, the one he just put back's on the bottom or top. Yeah, right, or, I right. mean, how do we know where that goes? But if you assume that it is completely random, then yes, this version of craps, mathematics, is going to be the same as rolling two dice. Now, Brent, as you said, yes, there could be a case where you're rolling the dice and both the cards that have come out are sevens. Right. It could be a five and a two and a four and a three, yeah. and you're screwed either way. It absolutely right. could be. Right. On the other hand, two cards could come out and one's a six and one's an eight. Well, right. you're not going to, there's no right. way to seven out on the right. next. You kind of have to get past that, though, and know that in the long run, it's going to be the same. It's going to be completely random. And if you're seeing that rolls are shorter there, it's probably just selective memory more than anything else. Or, you know, it's a short run and right. you know statistically you need more examples if there really were something going on there we'll switch to the don't you know if the roles right. are short, shorter you could take advantage of it so chances are no it is going to be completely random even though it is kind of a weird way to do it and yeah. and the yeah, well, what i don't like either. is i don't like the fact that the shuffle machine the card that gets put back in there now let's say they put the card back in and then there's a bunch of bets being made or there's some discussion and the cards have had 30 seconds to Mm -hmm. shuffle and randomize. But what about if they put the card in there and you're the only guy in the table and then they just pull another one out? Did the the last card actually get shuffled in? I think there is a certain amount of time that is mandatory that the machine goes for. So it's not like it spits it out right away. There's probably a minimum... A minimum amount of time, or maybe a minimum number of shuffles. I don't know how. Do you they remember do it. A, a light or buzzer there to signify that? It I don't, shuffled through? but there must have been. There must have been. I mean, you'd think there'd have to. I yeah. mean, to to legitimately keep it fair. Yeah. Otherwise, you see, the problem is that card doesn't oh, get shuffled in. Sure. There's only 35 outcomes, not 36. Yeah, absolutely. And, it and if could... you pulled one eight out, if you pulled like a six and a two out, if that's the card that doesn't get shuffled in, then you're at a huge disadvantage. Sure. There might there might be a flaw in this. There it might be vulnerable to you know an AP play. I doubt it, but it's always possible. Yeah. Anyway. Kind of a long answer there, but no, it's probably just as random as the, uh, a game that you'd see in Vegas. And if it's not, yeah, bet the don't. I'll tell you what, though, Brett, just do this. Just bitch and moan every time you're there about how stupid that is mm-hmm. <laughs> and then see if they change it. And maybe it. they'll change it like Paula did. <laughs> yeah. Well, like Paula did, like like Harris did. They changed how they did craps because a bunch of people wanted A lot of people to, did complain. Complain yeah. they yeah. wanted it this other way, yeah. you know, yeah. And, yeah. and statistically it's the same, right. but they just like this other way and, and, it, and honestly changed because there were a group of people who pushed for that. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to start pushing for things I like. (laughs) Like they should screen people at the door. Oh, dear. What's your name, sir? (laughs) (laughs) All right, next call. Hi, guys. This is Bray from uh, Brooklyn. I'm a new listener. I uh, probably listened about five episodes. Just started maybe four or five days ago. 
And I don't know, I'm a new craps player, so I guess I would give my first craps report, which was about a month ago. Tell the story, I was in El Dorado Casino in Reno. Love that casino. I love the, the staff there. They're very nice, always, because I'm pretty regular there. But I, I usually play roulette, and so this particular day, I had no plans on playing craps, but played roulette, and I hit 15 numbers in a row. <laughs> And so I won quite a bit. And after that, I lost the next number. And so I was like, okay, maybe I should relax. And then I won the next two numbers. So I won like basically 17 numbers out of 18. And it was like the best roulette run I've ever had. Even the dealer, she said, I've never seen that. So I uh, took my winnings from there and I was like, well, they have a $5 minimum. So I was like, maybe I should just try craps. And so I get on the table and I'm learning from the dealer and the guy next to me what everything means because it, it was also confusing to me. I never even had the, I never thought of trying it because it just seemed confusing. And then I saw how fun it could be very quickly. So I play for probably about an hour, go back to my room, and then I come back down to like really play just to like, you know, gather myself or whatever. So there's a guy next to me. He's very like intoxicated, but not like belligerent or anything. You can just tell you. He's having a really good time, so he's rolling. I'm kind of just betting the new bets that I learned, and he hits five numbers. <laughs> and they have the fire bet, which I didn't know about. And so he won me probably $300 off of like $25. And so that was a very good craps experience. The next day I went down, played also about $50, and turned that into 340 because I had a monster roll. I was rolling for about 45 minutes, so... Obviously, it created a monster, so that's my, my new favorite game. Really interested in you guys' podcast. Really like what you guys say and all the perspective you guys give and the stories. I love the stories. Keep it up. Thank you, and I'm a new fan. All right. Well, welcome to the fold. <laughs> yeah. I hope his luck continues. I hope, I hope Kraft stays like that for a while. Yeah. I think probably, you know, we were looking at each other when he was talking about those roulette hits. I'm assuming he didn't just have, you know, one bet out there every time. He probably yeah. picked a lot of numbers. Right. But still, but that was 15 in a row. That's pretty amazing. That's pretty yeah. good. That's pretty yeah. Good if, you, if you only had one number and you hit 15 in a row... It's astronomical. Well, yeah, I wouldn't have believed the story if that had been the case. But if he bet like 10 numbers and each time hit one of them. Yeah, right. That, even in itself, is pretty amazing, right? Absolutely, yeah. 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 All right, next up is Skyler. Hey, Mark and Mike. This is Skyler. Just want to call, give you two trip reports. One is long overdue, but that is when I got to meet both of you guys, and that was great. And those are the Million Dollar Maker. And then that was a really great night. I got to play craps for about three and a half hours. Good session. I know I brought my girlfriend. She pulled me away from the table after the limits went up, but I honestly probably wanted to stay. I know there was like a madhouse there. And I got to meet a lot of the, the regulars. That was really cool. But you guys were so down to earth, and it was great meeting you guys. I really wanted to pull a prank by buying a lemonade and sending it to you because I know there was that one night where you couldn't get a lemonade. My girlfriend didn't find that very funny, so didn't wind up doing that. But I also had a recent trip report. Um, it was my fifth time going to Harrison, California, and there's a dealer by the name of Jimmy, and every time he gets there, for some reason, I do really go well. It was up and down the whole day, but I ended up scoring up an $87 win, which isn't too bad after, it was roughly around four hours. It's usually my gambling point. What was kind of crazy about it, at one point, I was down to around 240 when I bought in for 500 and my girlfriend was like kind of looking in at me like, hey, maybe we should just walk away. But I did the old Dr. Mike little, little prop bet, not really prop bet, but a field bet, which is not usually what I do. Put a hundred dollars down on it, and what do you know, six six, and that pays triple at Harris. So I was loving the field after that, but decided to score a win at eighty seven dollars up. And um, I just heard your guys' most recent episode, and I think it's great. I'm starting to keep an Excel sheet as well. Uh, with my five visits to Harris, Southern California, I'm up, and I know the tables can turn but hopefully not the craft staples turn. So hopefully next time I get to gamble with you guys, I know um, when I did get to see you guys, it was a madhouse and they were up in limits like crazy. But I just want to say thanks again for the podcast and uh, it was great meeting you guys. Hope to see you guys next time. Bye. You should have sent that lemonade over. Yeah, that that would have been, been, been funny. funny. It was funny when they upped the limits and they were going to leave. Yeah. 
and he said something about like staying or something. Well, I know. And remember? I, yeah, exactly. Hey, I'll tell like, you. Nope. Skyler, you've got to keep this girlfriend, okay? Yeah, because right. she's going to keep you in check. Uh, yeah. But yeah, when they were about, I said, hey, you guys going to stay till 11 o'clock because that's right. when the giveaway was. Right. And it was like 7 o'clock, right? Right. And you and can he, tell she, oh, no. No. No, she's <laughs> real quick, no. no, we're not staying. <laughs> they should probably marry her. Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> that was funny. And Jimmy, the dealer he's talking about, Jimmy, yeah. is a super nice guy. Yeah. Always super super positive that's what i like about yeah Jimmy. i like that's, jimmy's a dealer. that's yep. why and, yep. he, and he's a good dealer yes exactly so. yep all right next call hey guys this is mike from charlotte north carolina got a gambling story for you me and my buddy go to cherokee uh probably about once a month he usually plays roulette i usually play craps this past trip craps wasn't doing so well for me i was down about 250 bucks and i went to find him at roulette and he was up like 1500 and surprisingly, his favorite number is black eight, and that hit three out of four spins. So he won $1,500 on basically four spins, just letting his money ride. I continued to play some other things, no luck. And then later in the day, I joined him at roulette, and I also bet on black eight, and I won all my money back on one spin, about $285. Broke even for the day. He finished up 2500 so uh, all in all, if you're playing roulette, always leave your bet on the last number that you want on. All right, guys, keep up the good work. Thanks. Hey, yeah. Good advice. It is good. I advice. think the general good advice here is that if you're losing at one game, go to another game. Go to another game. Get all your money back. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you have to do that. You just have to leave the craps table, walk over to the blackjack table, and make a two thousand dollar bet. <laughs> That's right. That's just smart gambling. <laughs> and p- pray you don't get a double. Game <laughs> yeah. Game. That's a, hey, it's a pair of eights, Doctor Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great. <laughs> All right, up next is Adam. Hey, guys, it's Adam from Connecticut. Um, I just wanted to call and uh, discuss something that happened to me last night at MGM Springfield. First of all, I I just want to reiterate what I said last week in regards to them listening to the players and keeping uh, tables at a reasonable minimum. I was there from about 8.30 on Friday night until close to 1 a.m. I played craps the whole time. I started at a $10 table. I noticed there was one other $10 table and then a few 15 scattered throughout. And the two $10 tables stayed at $10 the entire night. So they were definitely listening to their player base. Both were full. Both were hot. Um, it was a great night. What happened to me was um, this guy comes up to the table. I was standing at the end on the left side of the stick at the end of the table. And he asked to squeeze between me and a uh, young female that were there. And there was plenty of room on the other side of me, so I just moved down a spot thinking that he was going to have plenty of room. I noticed that he was kind of, you know, using the table to stand up. He was having a hard time standing and leaning against the table and just kind of kept leaning into my personal space a little bit. I know the table can get crowded, but there was plenty of room that I gave him. So I moved on again, and it turned out that he, he was again leaning into my space. For a smaller guy, he seemed to be taking up quite a bit of room. I'm just curious how you guys handle that kind of situation. I'm an emergency room nurse, so I don't have a problem telling people how things are and what they need to do, but I'm also not going to cause confrontation in the middle of a casino, especially with somebody that's intoxicated. He definitely, you know, seems the type that might try to cause a problem if I had said something to him. Um, eventually, he ended up losing all his money. He was playing very, very aggressively and, and poorly, but I'm just wondering if you guys have ever run into that situation and what your solution is for it. All right. I look forward to hearing your feedback, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, Adam. So you say you're an ER nurse. It sounds like confrontation is something that you're used to, but that you don't want to do it in a casino environment. We can certainly understand that. Uh, you know, one thing might be confront him and and see, yeah. you know, what well, happens. Well, you know what I'd be worried about when he's telling this story? I'm thinking the guy might be trying to rail him. Oh, that could you be know, too, he, yeah. He might be leaning into your space just hopefully to snag a chip or two mm-hmm. when you're yeah. not paying attention yeah. or, you know, a hard eight comes up and you're like, woo, you know, I got a right, hard you're eight. you're looking then, at the middle of the table. Boom, and, you know, yeah. you're down a chip or two because yeah. that's a common ploy. So you got to be really careful when people are yeah. squeezing in like that. You could say something to the floor or the pit and, you know, kind of say, hey, you know, look what's going on here. Yeah, Let I have no problem it. just saying, hey, I need a little space here. You know, give me some space. But, you know, if he's drunk, who knows what kind of reaction you might get. And, right. and doggone it, if it's a drunk person, hopefully they get rid of him or, you know, you just move on. Depends on how much confrontation you want to deal with and how drunk the guy is, how right. belligerent he might be. Right. You know? Or just pick up your chips and then, hey, let me give you some space and then just move. <laughs> yeah. Just completely move. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I I hate that. Yeah. I mean, if they're not drunk and they're doing that, then something's up. Right. All right. Next up is Jason. 
Hi, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is Jason from Winter Garden, Florida, which is just outside Orlando near uh, Walt Disney World. Um, I took a trip out to your neck of the woods. I had a business trip out to the San Diego area and decided to check out a few of the casinos you have out there. First one I went to was your local Harrah's. I played poker. I played 3-6 Limit Hold'em and did pretty well there. However, I'll have to say I was not impressed with the poker room. The dealers were nice, the staff seemed pretty good, but it just seemed kind of run down and needed needed some help. Yeah, let me pause it there. The poker room at Harris Southern California is not good. It, it looks like it's an afterthought. Yeah. It really is. Well, it's I've a, heard somebody was saying recently, they were saying that they're going to redo it. Oh, well, I'm not that surprised. They're, that they're going to add a whole new a room. Okay, uh, you know, they're yeah. going to make a dedicated poker okay, room. Okay, yeah. That thing's just kind of like a... It's just off to the side, yeah, and it's, it's like never a little, crowded. A little cubby hole off to the side. Yeah, it's, it's tables. never crowded. Maybe they have a couple games going, a limit game and a no limit game. It's always only hold them. Right. So, yeah, that is not the place to play poker in no. the San Diego area. <laughs> no, but I did hear, I want to say it was one of the pit bosses that are saying, oh, they're going to really do something. It doesn't and, surprise me. Good, good, so. good. The next casino trip was to Pachanga, where I wanted to go see the poker room, which apparently is the biggest poker room in San Diego area. So I, I went in, and it was kind of busy. It had several tables going. Um, I'm a limit player. I signed up for 4-8 limit hold'em, but uh, there wasn't an opening. But they did have five-card Omaha going. 485 card Omaha high low. So I played that for a little while and basically cleaned the table out. And then I went over the, they had a 2 4 limit hold'em game going. So I went over that, won some money. So I was up by the time I was called for 4 8 limit. I get to the table I, and I was running really good. And then I started running bad and ended up about breaking even. Um, I tried to play craps there, but the craps table was a $15 table and it was absolutely packed. So uh, that was not going to be in the cards for the night, no pun intended. Yeah, Pachanga's poker room is big yes. with a lot of action. And that game that he's talking about, that five card Omaha, it's also called Big O. High low, man, that can be a juicy game. I was talking on the Better Life. I was on their recent episode talking about how I played that up at Garden Casino up in the LA area, and what a juicy game! People just staying in like crazy. Yeah. You know, there's so many combinations, and people are staying in with these you know second best hands and you just wait for enthusiastic yeah. people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but Ch- I've never played there, but we've looked in there. That's one of the bigger rooms, at least in the area. Yeah, I'll tell you what. When you're playing Big O, you stay in with two pair. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I got two pair. The pair of threes on the board and the pair of fours <laughs> in my uh, down cards here. Yeah. I'm looking good. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we have never enjoyed playing craps at Pechanga. I don't know if it's the crew or it, it always. We have never had good experiences. No, there. we just haven't. So no. I should I should say I was joking about the two pair just in case. Oh, just, just to make everybody yeah. clear. Yeah, as yeah. well, somebody will call in. And you, really, two pair? <laughs> <laughs> We've seen it, folks. Is yeah, the reason we, we're bringing we're, it up. We laugh yeah. about it because it happens quite a bit. Yeah. Just like you've got two pairs, yeah. and one of them's on, <laughs> the, on the board. board so yeah. I've got those two. <laughs> So the, the last casino I checked out was Pala, and I have to say that that was my favorite of the three. I went there to play craps, and they had a $5 table, and full table, lots of action, fun crowd, decent dealers. I actually bought in for 200 and colored up for 200 So after craps, see if I could get to play Baccarat or Roulette. And unfortunately, I was walking around, the roulette tables were full, the lower limit Baccarat tables were full. So I peeked my head into the uh, high limit room and saw that they had $25 that was a minimum on one of the Baccarat tables. So I said, well, I can afford that and uh, ended up winning about 150 at Baccarat in the high limit room. And uh, I would have to say that that was really enjoyable experience. Great dealers. Overall, I, I, like I said, the PAL experience was great. I think you should really check out their craps table. I don't know if you've ever played there before, but it was a good time. I just want to say I really enjoy your podcast. I discovered it I'm a recent, uh, recently from uh, I'm a subscriber to the Color Up YouTube channel, and you mentioned your podcast, so I'm a very recent listener. Started listening within the past few months. So I, I really appreciate you guys. I really uh, like the banter between you two and, and your podcast. So, so good luck to you. Hopefully, uh, maybe we can meet up sometime at the craps tables. Good luck, 
and uh, thank you very much. Yes, we have played at Paula. We have yes. not played at the craps table since they changed the way the dice and the cards work right. together. At right. least it's we not the, the, old the way. crummy way that it was. But I'll tell you what Jason is saying. We always want to remind people, check out the high limit room because there may be lower limits than you expect. Yes. $25 Baccarat, $25 Pi Gow Poker. Oh my right. gosh. You know, right. and get, and and get, get the, the good amenities. cocktails. Get and yeah, the good exactly. Amenities. So, yeah. Yeah. It's funny though that Paula is the one he liked the most and that's the one that's struggling financially. That's a shame, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, I think it's location, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I think it's location. Because people coming from the north, they stop at Pechanga, right. and it's a little too far north for people who are coming up from San Diego. Right, they go to yeah, Harris. Yeah. It's funny, though. The other two are doing fine, and Paula seems to be struggling financially. Yeah, at least yeah. that's the rumor That's. I think you've heard that, too, yeah. 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 All right, next call. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is Brendan calling from Cleveland, Ohio. Just wanted to give you guys a trip report on my recent trip to Las Vegas. Uh, ended up coming out a loser, ultimately, but still had a really good time. But I wanted to address a few things I've actually heard on some of the other shows on the podcast, specifically about Harrah's. We actually got to play at Harrah's quite a bit. I like staying there. It's very easy to get in and out of. The rooms are nice. They're not very nice, but mainly I like how easy it is to get on the strip, the location. And the dealers are pretty nice. I'm probably one of your younger listeners. I just turned 23, going out for my 23rd birthday. Uh, I don't know if you guys have this issue or not, but I got carded everywhere I went. And it's funny because we were sitting at the Paris, asked one of the pit bosses what was the deal with getting carded everywhere. It's almost a little overkill how much they're asking for IDs. Apparently, you know, they had some fraud where about 31 people either got fired or suspended. Uh, now all the Caesars properties are buckling down. Oh, and by the way, if you're looking for three to two blackjack, Paris is a place to be on a $10 table. Thanks, guys. Love the show. So, uh, no, Brendan, we uh, do not get carded very often. Uh, <laughs> if you've ever seen us, uh, you might uh, understand young. why. Yeah, it's it's not a problem for us. <laughs> but, no, I, I understand. when we were young, well, when we were younger... And going to Vegas, they didn't card people as much. You know, I think you're it right, Mike. Yeah, I can't remember getting carded. Issue. Yeah, yeah, but it is a big issue to them. To, I mean, that's now, why it today happens so it much. Is a right? Huge issue. And even yeah. you said yourself, people are getting fired over it. So yeah. you know, they they need to check. I like how at the beginning of the call, Brendan said that somehow he lost for the trip. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I yeah, know we, how, we know I, what that's like. I don't know how that happens. I did everything right, but somehow I lost for the trip. Yeah. Hey, I want to know, uh, and uh, maybe Brendan can call back later and let me know about this. What about the Cleveland Browns this year? Oh, d- what are we going to talk Every, about the Cleveland Browns? Er, everybody is talking about the Cleveland Browns. Yeah, and the problem is everybody's betting futures on the Cleveland Browns, right. so it's the line is no good. Right. right? The, Too many people are betting on right. it. Right. It's crazy. People are like, oh, they're going to win 10 games. They're going to 11 yeah. games. I, I, you know, I don't know. Baker Mayfield is good, but are they going to turn around that fast? I want to know from somebody in Cleveland. Are they going to turn around that fast? You want to know from uh, somebody I, in Cleveland? Yeah, I just want an honest opinion. All right, from I want to hear from somebody who's not in Cleveland. I want to hear that? somebody in Cleveland call and say, yeah, you know, we're going to be better, but we're not winning 12 games. Okay, so that's what you want to yeah, hear. Yeah, I want to hear something like, yeah, we might be 8-8 eight and eight this year. Okay. You know, that, and then I'd understand. The, I'd then, think, okay, that that's somebody who's that's got... That's reasonable. But you hear people on the talk... I listen to so much sports yeah, radio, yeah. and they're talking, you know, hey, we're going to win 10 games, 11... <laughs> you're not winning 11 games this year in Cleveland. <laughs> All right, next up is Kevin. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. It's Kevin from Toronto, Canada here, and I'm a first-time caller. I just started listening to the podcast about three or four weeks ago, so I have listened to only about maybe three or four episodes, and I just wanted to share a recent trip to my local casino. I definitely describe myself as a low roller for sure, and I don't get to play very often because I also don't have a car. Anyways, when I go to the casino, I prefer to play the electronic version of a blackjack because those minimums are $5 as opposed to the $25 that are at the tables. Anyways, I started playing, and uh, after about an hour... I've been doing really well, and I was up about $100. I got blackjack on my $5 bet. To my surprise, I was paid $6 for the blackjack. I had always been playing this electronic blackjack at this particular casino, and I'd been playing for just about a year, maybe over a year, and they had always paid three to two. I was so angered, I cashed out my voucher, and I ran to the tables to see if those had changed, maybe to six to five as well, which they hadn't. 
I was just wondering if you guys had ever experienced something like this as well, where the pay tables change on a particular game that you frequent. Thank you so much, guys. I love the podcast, and keep it up. Bye. Yeah, that's too bad. You know, if it had been a table game, maybe a dealer could have said, oh, you know, we just recently changed to six, six to five. five. But they're not going to put a sign on a machine or anything. No. Warning! Yeah. You know, <laughs> different pay table Flashy. than last time you played. <laughs> have we ever been in a situation like that where we well, were playing a game? And I don't know that I've ever been surprised about a pay table per se. Now there was an instance recently where I was surprised where they let some doofus just come and buy in for here $500. We go. Yeah, here we and, go. And, and then walk away from the table. They I, should change that rule. I can't think of a particular situation like a game where we've played a lot and then suddenly we're there one no. day and they're paying differently. No. The only thing close, Mike, is that every time you go to Las Vegas and you're playing on the strip, you're not used to those strip prop bet payouts, right? Right, uh, yeah, and that, that, that always throws you. That always throws me yeah, for a little bit, so. and then I get, then you know, it takes me a few rolls to get that in my head. Yeah. And it's not going to pay, you know, uh, thirty-two one. It's thirty-four one. Yeah, yeah. All right, next call. Hey, Mike and Mark, this is Zach from Indianapolis. I've been a listener for about six months or so. First time caller. Me and a buddy of mine. Shout out to my buddy Bobby Bones. We're from Indianapolis here, and we went down to uh, southeast Indiana, Belterra, and uh, we were playing on the crapless table, having some fun. I was playing Iron Cross, and I don't even know how he was playing. He throws out a lot of prop bets, and I, I made the joke that I heard I think Mark make one time. Everybody was throwing prop bets out there, and I was a shooter. <laughs> I said, nothing for me, please. And Yeah, Stickman got a kick out of that. <laughs> and then Saturday morning, we woke up, and all they had open was this new table, uh, they call it a tub, I guess. You have a stick man and one dealer on the other side, and it's about the size of a tub or a jacuzzi, and you can only have about six players max, I think. So we played that Saturday morning a little bit, and uh, just wanted to see if you guys have played on one of those tables yet because it's very interesting. You just have uh, the two dealers, so you get six people on there. The dealer on the other side is working his ass off, so that was interesting once you get your guys' take. And then also uh, here in Indianapolis, we're getting some live dealers in January, so pretty excited about that. I'll have uh, two casinos within an hour's drive of me, so that'd be a lot of fun. Well, keep it up on the podcast. I love it, and I'll keep on listening. Thanks, guys. Now, Mike, you've played at these craps tubs before. Oh, yeah. I don't think I have. Now, yeah. were there two dealers or only one? The ones I played at had one dealer. One dealer, but right? He was he run the stick and pay all the payouts. And was it six people? You think yeah, all like, the way around? Yeah, like three on each side. Yeah, and he was he had to do everything. Yeah, yeah, he had to do everything. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. but he, it's small, so sure, but you still, can reach the payouts. You can. Re- it's very a slow game. Yeah, because right. he's got a shove you the dice, you roll the dice, then he's got to, you know, pay or do whatever, book all the bets. Sure, everything. book it, you know, including prop bets it's in the middle, a, so right, yeah, a lot yeah, slower, yeah, 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 it's slow. Yeah. But it's fun, those craps games are yeah, fun. Sure. There's no such thing as a short roll. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like playing craps. Get them down to the end, sir. Playing, I did! They're in the pool! <laughs> playing craps in your bathtub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, dice. Uh, yeah. I should have uh, said yeah. dice. I'm glad you clarified that, <laughs> just in case somebody just tuned in. Yeah. Hey, my wife was watching a show uh, she watches all these home design shows, and mm-hmm. it was in Indianapolis. I just because okay. he brought up Indianapolis, yeah. boy, you know they love the Indy Five Hundred. In really, that's their thing. Okay, right? that's their thing. Uh-huh. So some guy had a bed custom made, mm-hmm. like a race car, and he actually had a, a real, man. Yeah, had actually, okay, yeah, a grown a man. man, a grown man. Okay, yeah, <laughs> actually had this bed made made by a company that makes Indy cars. Real right? cars. Not beds, but real real indie cars. <laughs> okay. Right? So they did fiberglass. The, the front part was fiberglass. Uh-huh. And the, the back, I don't know what it's called, spoiler or whatever, you know, it's fiberglass. And it had real indie tires on it that had been used on a race car. Wow. On the side. Uh-huh. And in the middle is a bed. <laughs> yeah. What did his parents think of it? <laughs> well, the guy, it was a guy and his daughter who lived together. Okay. But that's the guy had it made for his daughter. Oh, you know, for his daughter. Yeah, his daughter. Oh, but, all right. But he, How, and it's why in did his you lead house. with that? All right. Well, what, they're from Indianapolis. They love the <laughs> Of course they do. Of course. Can you imagine? Though? It had real tires on that's, it. I, that was I, very cool. I, I, wouldn't it keep you up at night, those tires, the smell, right? That's, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking. And you know how Indy tires, after they've been on a, on the track for a yeah. while, they're worn. Yeah. They're pretty worn down. I mean, there's no tread to it. Yeah. Right? It's just flat. And it's got to smell like rubber. Yeah. How can Plus you Plus the exhaust going all night? That's <laughs> yeah. not, that just doesn't seem safe to me. You just lay there in bed. <laughs> 
All right. Marco is going to be hosting a craps party, and he's got a few ideas, so let's listen. <laughs> oh, boy. Hey, Mark and Dr. Mike. This is Marco from Germany. I am calling in with a question about a private craps event that I was asked to host. So I'm supposed to deal craps to some random Germans um, who want to have a, a fun casino night. I've actually done this in the past, and it, it's been a lot of fun, but still, I have experienced that it's it's a little difficult for some people to, to understand uh, what's going on in the game. And I was thinking to, to make some changes to the game for that night to just make it a little easier. My changes would be the following. I would make the seven a loser on the come out so that it's a constant loser throughout the game. And every time someone rolls a seven, uh, the dice pass on to the next person. Of course, then you have to make up for the fact that you just took away the most important aspect of the come out roll. In order to make up for that, I would make the two, three, 11, and 12 winners. Second change would be that I would make the pass line mandatory and eliminate the dark side. The reason I'm doing this is I want to have people, you know, experience the camaraderie of the game, the social aspect of craps. Everybody should be on the same bet and, you know, cheer for the, for the shooter to make the point. And the last change would be that I would eliminate the odds entirely and uh, substitute that with the place bets paying like the odds. So if you place the six, you're going to be paid six to five. If you place the four, you're going to be paid two to one. So uh, really excited to hear your thoughts about this. Uh, you think this could work at a fun night, you know, with a couple friends. I know that this is going to make some or have some effects on the, on the house edge, probably shifting it towards the players, which is why I'm not going to bank this game. We're just going to play a tournament style. So these considerations are not that important to me. And one last question regarding the tournament style. If you play like this typically at the end, People will make some reckless bets, and then the guy who made a big bet on the last roll wins the tournament. Do you have any ideas about rules that would soften the impact on that phenomenon to, to make it a little more important what you do throughout the game instead of you know these last two, three rolls? Thank you very much for your input, and uh, keep up the great work. All the best wishes from Jimmy. See ya. The well, first thing I want to say is... This is the Marco that we met in. Like, I'm sure it is. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And he said, random German people are going <laughs> to. <laughs> now, I know, I know Marco's not <laughs> German. He just lives in Germany. Oh, is that true? Yes. Oh, okay. He just lives in Germany. Okay. He's not German. Okay. I, oh, right. He's Amer- He's actually from the United States. Well, he's got some kind of accent. Maybe yeah. he's just picked up a little bit of the German accent. Oh. But I kind of remember he's born here. But All right. Marco, anyway. if that's not true, yeah. I apologize. Right. On and I do of too Dr. for Mike. not remembering. All right. Yeah. But I remember that he lived in Germany. Yeah. You know, it's just funny. He says random, <laughs> random. Like just people off the street are coming <laughs> over to his house. Well, one of the reasons he wanted to do this too was that he figured these people would not be playing craps ever again because there's right. no craps in Germany. You know, yeah, if, they, they if probably, you think they're never playing again, yeah. then you could change it whatever yeah. way you yeah. want. But otherwise, they're going to they're yeah. going to end up at a craps table. Wait a minute. Yeah, I don't know that I would really bother to change the rules. I know that it can be confusing. You know, well, if I you, like having no don't pass. Well, sure, that's easy. But, you know, just say no, it, don't pass. Yeah, right, no, don't right. pass. Because that makes it a lot easier sure, for everybody, sure. and they'd be playing together and having yeah, fun. Yeah. I don't know about making the seven a loser all the time. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. that is a huge part of the game. It is a big part of the game. And actually, Marco, when you were talking about it, that would favor the house. Big because time. you're huge. you're turning six winning rolls, a seven, into losing rolls, and you're only switching four losing rolls, the two, three, and 12, into winning rolls. So right. that would actually be an advantage for the house. House. And then, yeah, as far as the odds go, I don't know. Well, I, the odds, yeah, it might make it easier yeah. just to say everything pays two to one or six to five or. Yeah, Marco, if you want to, go for it. <laughs> yeah. You know, if you are going to play a tournament style, though, eh, craps tournaments, yeah, they're not quite as good as, say, blackjack tournaments, but it is not uncommon to have those last few rolls determine who the winner is in the tournament Well, what like you that. have to do, though, is make a max bet. Right. That's the important thing. Make, make a, a max, max bet. bet. So, right. so somebody can't put all their money on a 12. Or, yes, exactly. It's a max bet of 200. Yeah. and Right. Maybe right. you have higher maximums for bets like the pass line and for place bets, but for those inside prop bets, yeah. you know, lower, and right, so that they can't... most you can bet on that. So at the end, some guy just can't say, well, I'm going to lose, but if I put my 400 remaining dollars on 
on 12 yeah. and hope 12 comes up, yeah. you know, I'm going to have $12,000 and win this tournament. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, whatever you decide, Marco, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have fun and see you in uh, Atlantic City. Yeah, exactly. When are we going to Atlantic City? Eh, we will. All right, eventually. All right, last call. Hello, fellas. It's Thomas from Washington calling in with a quick trip report from the beautiful Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. I went out there for a business trip but found time to visit Crown Point Casino, which is on the smaller island of Tobago. Pretty interesting setup. It was on the second floor of this little strip mall, very small, and only had slots in those self-spitting electronic roulette machines. Uh, there was no human-operated games of any type, and it was pretty deserted in there. I didn't play long and stuck to roulette. Got pretty lucky, black hit nine times in a row, and I hit my two numbers, red 12 and black 28. So I tripled my buy-in and left pretty quickly. The more interesting part of the story, from my perspective, was a couple nights later when I was uh, at an outdoor street festival and discovered a gentleman running a homemade street roulette game. His wheel, it was like a Wheel of Fortune, big wheel type setup instead of the traditional ball rattling around but it used eight different colored triangles instead of numbers, and the table was this warped sheet of plywood with reciprocating colored squares. Uh, I'm going to try and email a photo in that I discreetly took. And basically, gameplay was you threw your cash down on a square on the table and watched the gentleman spin the wheel, and if your color hit, you got paid four to one, which is pretty terrible, but I had to try. I was a winner on my first spin and walked away. Just a really, really weird kind of sketchy experience and it made me wonder what the weirdest gambling setup was for both of you thanks guys catch you next time yeah thomas did send us a picture of it and i will I post it that. you did yeah. see the picture okay that. i'll yeah. post it to the show notes on our website so people can see it it's very sketchy yeah <laughs> oh it'd be so easy to rig that oh exactly and i'm wondering if maybe when thomas went up to the table made that first bet they deliberately Let made him win. him win right right you know to, in hopes of taking his money later and you know right. we're surprised when he just left really quick right the only thing I've ever seen is every once in a while you'll see a three-card money game going on on the Strip, which baffles me when there's a casino, you know, right. 100 feet away right. that somebody would want to play three-card money on the, on the street when they know it's a scam. We've right? seen that a lot, you know, yeah. usually by the, ele- you know, the elevators that go up and down mm-hmm, for, yeah. the, for the walkways across the street. There's yeah. always some guy with Yeah, they go card, real quick and then, you know, get out of there money, before yeah. the cops come along. Can you think of anything else that we've seen yeah. like that, really sketchy like that? I, no. I well, really I've think. seen some stuff in New Orleans when I was there once. Oh, really? Street, street stuff where, you know, they're trying to get you to bet on stuff. It's, oh, really? It's all scam, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. okay. This is like, pre, like pre, three card money stuff? Yeah, or? like three card money uh-huh. and other stuff. It was pre Katrina. And you'd be walking by a guy, oh, come on, then let me, mm-hmm. you know, let me do this, let me do this. And oh, they'd okay. Be running, yeah. you know, some kind of scams. Sure. There's one on every corner, yeah. just about. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's that way now. This yeah. was uh, quite a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we may be going to that area before too long. Yeah. Here. We'll We're have to see. Still if we, waiting for we'll an announcement. Anything. I'd be worried the guy could have his hands on the table or underneath. He hits a button, it stops wherever. Well, uh, hits and a it, button. You saw I mean, that he didn't a, have any a, button. Not there a was... button, but there's a way to stop it. You know, so it stops where you want it. Yeah. It absolutely could. Be. Well, and it's paying four to one, and there are eight different squares too. I mean, right. he could just run a legitimate game and still clean up. <laughs> and yeah. still clean up, yeah. right? Well, Mike, you were thinking about an August Vegas trip, no, but that's not going to happen now. Happen. Okay. Yeah, just okay. can't just can't work, work it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, with work and everything, I'd love to go. Yeah. so maybe a September trip. Oh, okay. All right, you we'll know. keep that in mind. Maybe a September, and of course, and we'll be there in October. There in October yeah. too. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. We want to thank some people for some PayPal donations. First of all, recurring donations from Kurt and from Nathan. Thank you very much. Also, a donation from Thomas. Love the show. Headed to Vegas in August for the first time in a while. Keep up the good work. Thanks very much, Thomas. Also, from Rob from Texas, karma donation for upcoming trip to Tahoe, Harris, Northern California, and later in the month, Harris, Southern California. Keep up the good work. Oh, good. Well, Rob, let us know when you're going to be there. Yeah. You know, we're usually there on a Friday or Saturday night. Also, a donation from Robin over at Any Time Gambling. Thanks for all you do. Don't believe in karma, but I do believe in math. Embrace the math, not the myth. Thanks for the support over the years, Dave and Dr. Dave. There you go, right? <laughs> Respect you the go. math, Mike. Respect the math. And finally, a donation from Two Way Hard Eight. Just a little hard eight bet for my upcoming trip to Vegas next week. Thanks for all the great gambling content. A listener who is actually named David. 
Ah, there you go. <laughs> Two-way heart eight. eight David, eight, eight, they're eight. all named David, okay? <laughs> hey, be sure to check out our TV listing showing all the gambling-related shows coming up within the next two weeks. We update those listings every Wednesday using a customized program that searches through all the raw American TV data. Just go to youcanbetonthat.com slash TV dash listings. We'd love to hear from you. Call our voicemail hotline at 951-292-4377. That's 9512-WAGERS. 9512-WAGERS. Or you can email us at youcanbetonthat at gmail.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at youcanbetonthat and on Facebook at facebook.com slash youcanbetonthat. Finally, please go to your favorite podcast app and write a review on us. We love getting your feedback. Dr. Mike? Mark, I just want you to take a moment and think about the over-unders in baseball. All right. Now, why is it there have been so many, the games end up being over, and the line adjusts. Have you noticed from the beginning of the year? Oh, my gosh. The line, yeah. You know, it was like six runs, seven run games. Now you're seeing 10 to 13 runs a mm-hmm. game. Yeah. And still they're going over. Yeah, I know. It's a crazy year in baseball as far as hits and run scored. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> The New York Yankees have more home runs in Baltimore (laughs) than two other teams in Major League Baseball have at their own stadium. That's amazing. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. They don't play every game in Baltimore. Oh, they don't. (laughs) But they have more home runs in Baltimore than two other teams have in their own stadiums. (laughs) That is amazing. That is absolutely blows my mind away. The Padres are, what, three home runs now away in August. From breaking their all-time career home runs in sure. the season. Well, they've got some power hitters, too, this year, which yeah, they, they haven't always had. had but... They haven't always had that, but they've had some hitters in the past, and All they've right. never... I mean, this is... It's unbelievable. I mean, they've <laughs> still got a month and a half to go, yep, yep. right? So I just I just want you to contemplate betting the under and going with the over. Now, today, when you emailed me that Arizona-Colorado game, the over-under was 139, yeah. then I'd say go under. I did take the over on that, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you did take the over. little typo. That's all it was, a little typo. <laughs> I looked at that, I'm like, 139? And it's in Arizona. <laughs> if it's in Colorado, then maybe, then maybe 139 is <laughs> possible. Yeah, uh, I've been making all these sports bets, and Mike, it always, you know, the next day, especially if I made some unders. The next day, you'll say, "Well, if you'd made those overs, we would have won." But today, it paid off. All right, today so, you did hit a couple. Yeah, of I know. In the long run, if I turned long, all those this uh, whole season, unders to overs, this whole I'd be. season, if you had never bet one under and just every game was over, <laughs> yeah. we'd be way ahead, <laughs> yeah. way yeah. ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want you to think about. All right, that. I'll ponder it. <laughs> yeah, ponder it tonight, and then tomorrow, bet all the unders. All right, sounds it's good. To drive me crazy. All right, sounds good. <laughs> all right, thanks for listening. Good night. That was wonderful. I had no idea you were so talented. The audience is going to love you.